science and our life series talk by dr rupa satish on urban wildlife the talk is organized by indian women scientists association ifsa with the generous support of board of research in nuclear sciences brns under department of atomic energy government of india indian women scientists association is an all india social welfare voluntary non profit secular organization set up in 1973 by 12 dynamic women scientists the headquarters are based in vashi navi mumbai along with 11 branches across india taking science to the society and women empowerment are ifsa's main mandates and it has been reaching to thousands of individuals through offline and online activities the popular science lecture series organized by ifsa is for college school students and the society like the one today science in our life talk by science awareness committee of ifsa has been started since september 21 which is supported by brn the series for every the series is for every individual from various walks of life eminent scientists and experts from respective fields have delivered lectures on nature conservation empowerment astronomy and so on to showcase the beauty of science and introduce all of us to recent development of stem and science at last it says taking efforts towards knowledge sharing promoting scientific innovation to science based platform today we have among us dr rupa satish a wildlife veterinarian she has worked with megafauna like lions tigers elephants leopards at bane ghata biological park she joined as wildlife veterinarian at ngo wildlife rescue and rehabilitation center wrrc at bane ghata rehabilitation center where she has been working and treating small mammals like monkeys civet slender loris jackals foxes bats spotted deer birds like kites owls quails myna cormorant pelican and egret parakeet heron etc and reptiles like cobras vipers rat snakes python wolf snakes tortoise turtles terrapin monitor lizards and much more dr rupa has co-authored a book tripod finds a friend and other stories stories of wildlife rescue and rehabilitation there would be no better person who could shed light on the various facets of urban wildlife i welcome dr rupa thank you thank you so much thank you so much it's an honor and a privilege to join such illustrious women scientists from across india so um as uh, sweetel said that um, i have been working for now uh, 14 years with this ngo where we we basically rescue and rehabilitate urban wildlife so um, we'll just jump in straight into the presentation i have uh, compiled uh, you know uh, image gallery i can say because i think images speak uh, uh, more than anything i can talk about so let me just jump right into it uh, thank you so much again for giving me this opportunity to address you all so uh what is urban wildlife so everybody is uh, it's like a at almost like an oxymoronic uh, statement urban wildlife so we are noticing that as the cities are developing and uh, more and more development is taking place and cities are moving closer to forest areas uh, animals are being rescued in urban spaces and these animals include small mammals birds reptiles and uh, all these animals which are uh, rescued are uh, all protected under the wildlife protection act of india 1972 which means that they are not to be kept as pets they are not to be trafficked in they are not to be you know their body parts used their meat or any other body part feathers claws harvested all these urban wildlife are inhabiting our various green spaces as well as non green spaces in our cities like parks 
apartment complexes, uh, water bodies, sewage systems, uh, gardens, and in Bangalore and other cities where there is a very well layout uh, plant colonies like Bajainagar, uh, where I live, JP Nagar, Indra Nagar, where the tree canopy forms a beautiful avenue of uh, trees, where a lot of wildlife is thriving. Now, we have to uh, be very clear that these are... Pardon? I haven't made it full screen. Uh, I have, ma'am. Uh, one minute. Now? No. I have. Mm -hmm. In my uh, screen. What, what you do is uh, where you uh, clicked on it, you know, just on the lowest bar, can you see a, like a presenter, like a yes. slideshow? Yes. Yeah, the yellow. Yeah, just click on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Is it? No. Uh, I I can see it as an entire screen, ma'am. That's what I'm... Um, ...that error. So, um, we finished the slide. So, basically, all these urban wildlife are protected by the uh, law under the Constitution, under the Wildlife Protection Act. And uh, so uh, we assume that if you find a bird or a snake in our vicinity, we can just jump in right in and uh, take it home if, if we are not scared. But that's completely illegal. So these, uh, these are living with us in our sweat systems as well as our uh, parks and colonies, even a barren, completely concretized place like an apartment complex where it's all cemented, we find urban wildlife, including reptiles. Now, these, we have to understand, are not being taken care of, fed by a vaccination and any kind of care or upkeep by humans. They are living with us, but there is no care as such. So, uh, um, as she mentioned in the introduction, this includes like more than 35 species I am talking about, including mammals like bonnet macaques, which is in the south of India. In the north of India, there are rhesus macaque, which is a major... A conflict animal now actually then there are bats jungle cat foxes jackals deer squirrels and slender lorises uh, birds like we commonly find uh, black kites brahmini kites uh, parakeets minas coils uh, owls etc and reptiles mainly uh, the snakes are the casualty like cobras and vipers and they're doing very well in the cities uh, because of our uh, rodent population which is quite high and the rodent population is high because of the uh, un, un, uh, open garbage uh, you know our garbage management has caused a boom for the rodents which has in turn helped the uh, wildlife especially snakes uh, so now uh, coming to the various reasons for rescue is uh, I Hello, Dr. Rupa. Uh, trauma cases, pollution, poisoning, and they are also rescued unhurt, unhurt, uh, orphaned animals, as well as some natural injuries. So getting straight down to it, as you see in this, on the screen, there are two species here. The one on the right is the rose ring parakeet, which is slightly smaller. On the left is an Alexandrine parakeet. So these are protected under the Schedule 2 of the Wildlife Protection Act, and they are majorly being trafficked. Alexandrine parakeet, because they are a very intelligent species, they can mimic and they can talk. So they're very popular. Online pet trade is booming, especially in Bangalore. You can just type Alexandrine parakeet and straight away the cost of it and all such uh, uh, you know, information starts coming up. So the police is acting as a, you know, undercover, the CID for a cell, and they seize huge number of animals. This is a rose ring parakeet you see on the screen, which is kept in these small boxes. And they're basically for fortune telling, you know, in villages you would have seen, they pick up a card and they will uh, give like a tarot card and they'll give the fortune. So again, CID for a cell goes, seizes them and uh, brings the bird along with the box and everything. So we have a um, long rehabilitation process, especially for the rose ring parakeets is because they will cut their tail feather to house it in this small, you know, box like cage. And that tail feather is very essential for the good flight of the animal. So uh, luckily the cut feather will 
regrow but it has to first molt that is the that cut feather is falls off and the new feather grows out from the base of the tail and then the animal bird has to learn to fly it is always been two dimensional you know sitting in this box so once we release it into a bigger enclosure it it starts flying slowly and then it has to perfect that flight and then so this is like a slow long process of rehab taking almost 9 months uh and also the psyche of the animal you have to understand that the animal has been kept in captivity so long its mind has been caged you know it's like institutionalized so when you release an animal immediately they will go straight to a human and get caught again you know so we need to give a long rehabilitation period during which the animal from a humanized and a human imprinted bird will slowly become shy and wild and secretive and then it is fit for release so uh, this is one of our main long standing uh, uh, cases of uh, you know rehabilitation so you can see in the image how many chicks are uh, seized by the police department forest department forest cell and big batches of them come you know so uh, in this image two baskets are full of the bigger ones are the alexandrian parakeets whereas the smaller ones are the rose ring parakeets these are the rose ring parakeets so we have to hand rear each bird with a commercially available reconstituted feed clean it because you know you leave little food on the body ants will come and eat off the bird alive you know but chick alive so each bird has to wiped gently with a warm water then uh, and this feeding is done almost four four times we start with five bring it down to four times bring it down to three times and in a month month and a half they once they gain their adult wait but the mindset is still a chick they are moved into a larger aviary platforms are made fruit is introduced you know so initially they want to be hand fed but then once we we stop reduce the frequency of feeding and keep the fruit then the bird will start uh, consuming it but then the flight has to improve the you know the practice has to and then finally the the mindset of the animal bird has to be become wild you know where we stop interacting we slowly make it more and more uh, aloof you know so that they develop the fear so this is a very long slow tedious process in the meanwhile we have to make sure disease control happens in the form of vaccinations deworming keeping the premises hygienic and clean so it's it's a it's a like it's like for a mother it's like each day counts you know and since we are based in banargata forest we have wild predators coming for an easy snack you know so you can see in the image the double fencing is done so that these immature birds don't realize the dangers and if they are too close to the mesh they can get attacked by wild cats and uh, you know uh, uh, other wild animals mongoose in the forest so uh, these are the illegal pet trade especially rose ringed and uh, alexandrian parakeet now with the onset of social media you can see this is an indian chameleon uh so people want to have beautiful uh, images on their social media and show i have this pet that pet so this is now a new fad you know the indian chameleon is being trafficked for the illegal pet trade and this hapless fellow was brought he was slightly dehydrated but otherwise luckily no other injuries and damage so we didn't even uh, like uh, observed it for like 5 hours and straight away went into the forest and left it you know because their diet is so specialized they have such delicate body parts any handling will cause damage and the stress the animal undergoes is an utter other level so keeping that in mind such animals which show no injuries are released uh, as soon as possible this is a rhesus macaque which is found in the north of india so now what is happening is it is being brought to the south of india for a dancing monkey you know begging monkey you'll see on the road side so this poor fellow was brought as a uh, little fellow then uh, we we you know we kept him for a bit but then we can't release him in bangalore and around the forests of karnataka so we have tied up with uh, uh, organization rescue in pune where it was sent back there he will now be rehabilitated and mixed with other rhesus macaque because it's a social group he can't be released a single animal and uh, you know because he's a pet and kept with people he's so friendly he's not at all scared you know you can see in this image he is giving me a good pose so now it will take a long process for him to get understand that humans are not his friends and he needs to run if he sees them you know so that is what the whole rehab process is you know to make the mentality of the animal wild again 
uh, this is a spotted deer. Uh, again, it's in the illegal pet trade. Uh, what happens is people say they find them in the forest fringes where the mother has got killed or, you know, succumbed to injury or abandoned. And uh, they hand rear them. Now, okay, that's a good thing to do. But the animal is now imprinted with the human and they have no fear. So such animals will succumb to predators like dogs in cities and cats in cities, you know, who come and attack. So this one's horn has a injury and he got, he, he actually tried to play with some dogs and they bit him nicely. So, uh, you know, again, the mentality has to be slowly reverted back to a wild creature, you know. And, um, uh, but what happens in deer especially is, they, they have undergoing something called capture myopathy, wherein uh, when they are uh, subjected to stress in the form of uh, interaction with dogs and aggressive uh, behavior of biting, barking, their heart starts, uh, you know, beating faster, they produce cortisol, and it goes in for myopathy, and they actually die in spite of being kept in a, a safe space, you know, in spite of the a dog or the a predator keeping them, uh, separating them from the predator they still succumb, you know. So such keeping such factors, we feel that as soon as you find a wild baby, wild animal in, in trouble, instead of taking care of it yourself as your baby, you have to immediately give it up to a rehab center so that the mentality is different and imprinting with humans does not take place, you know. This baby, for instance, was uh, brought, um, you know, um, th th this is the same adult which in the previous image. So the wound has healed in his horn, but there's a slight, uh, you know, uh, mis misalignment. Uh, and now it, he will take time to uh, revert back to his wild nature. So this is in our center where he's uh, relaxing uh, and will take more time to, uh, you know, become wild. Uh, so there are a lot of traditional practices and beliefs that are going around. And in the image, we have an Indian pangolin. Now, this is its defense position. Can you believe it? It's only defenses, no claws, no uh, venom, no, uh, you know, attacking behavior. It will curl up into this ball-like shape and hide it, you know. animal in India that is being poached because its scales are considered to be uh, used for Chinese medicine. You know, they grind it up into a powder form and use it for Chinese medicine. So now uh, through Nepal, Bihar, Nepal and Tibet into China. So the tiger skin, the elephant ivory is the, not the first uh, number one that is being trafficked but the pangolin scales you know so and these are beautiful creatures shy intelligent mammals which are specialist feeders called myrmecophage that is they only feed on termites and ants very essential for the health of the ecosystem the forest because they keep them under check and because it's a specialist feeder if it comes into my rescue facility i have a headache feeding it you know i cannot feed it. I mean, how do I source termites and insects, you know, and even if you uh, give another protein source of say boiled egg, that will cause digestive disturbances, you know, so it is such a um, challenge to keep it in captivity. That's why most zoos are unable to um, keep it as a display animal, you know. of it it is a constrictor from the you know the cousin of the python so there is no venom in the snake they are a simple constrictors where they use their body muscle to uh, constrict their prey subdue their prey and then consume it whole and now this is a called in canada especially it is called the yarat talehau or the two-headed snake next slide now uh, and that is because its head and its tail look very very similar so what happens is it is being trafficked majorly for two main reasons is uh, it is considered to be a good luck charm, you know. So wherever it is found, it is found on the earth. Uh, pardon? Yeah. So um, basically it is found, it's a, it's a terrestrial, you know, it is underground. It is a burrower it, uh, and it subdues small prey like frogs and toads and insects and um, 
So uh, what happens is, next slide, ma'am. So what happens is the head and the tail is similar. So because of this, it is called the two-headed snake or the Yerat Talehau, and it is considered to be magical. So wherever it is found, they say there's a hidden treasure buried under it. So now what is happening in the illegal pet trade is they are uh, the poachers or the, you know, the illegal unscrupulous poachers will go bury it under a particular space. And then, uh, you know, they will, they will go to the people who are just gullible and say, look, there is a snake here. There is a, you know, a treasure buried underneath. And uh, that's why the illegal uh, poaching is going more and more, you know. And uh, can I have the next slide? So the tail end, as you can see, is uh, then uh, because it resembles the head, which, uh, you know, which has all the uh, important brain, eyes, nose, etc. The tail is now mutilated with poke marks. You know, they make two poke marks for the eye, the mouth, the nose. And, you know, it's intentionally done and uh, exhibited in village fairs as a two-headed snake. So <clears throat> and another thing that we're seeing that is being done is... Uh, um, because they are considered uh, where they are found, there's a hidden treasure buried. People want to buy them and they are sold based on their body weight. So what happens is to increase the body weight of the animal, the uh, unscrupulous poachers will uh, take these metal ball bearings and shove it into its mouth, make incisions and, you know, just plant it in the body of the animal so that the weight increases. Next slide, ma'am. So what happens is uh, we have to use like an X-ray to actually take the X-ray of the animal when they come to determine if there are any metal ball bearings and other structures with it and then surgically remove it. Um, and then uh, it is released back into the forest. So this is happening right now and it is rampantly happening in red earth goas. Next slide. Now. Human cruelty. We're seeing a lot of cruel practices. This hapless uh, Indian rock python was basically found in the outskirts of the Bangalore in Anekal, where uh, people were so afraid of seeing such a big snake, though it's a constrictor and has no interest in eating people because it's a big, huge snake. And, you know, people have this instinctual fear. They straight away put kerosene on the animal and they put fire on it. So by the time the rescuer came, put out the fire, it was exhausted. You can see in this image, the rescuer is barely holding the head and the animal is completely exhausted. Next slide. So immediately put it under cool water to cool down the body. And uh, the snake looks so exhausted and given up. I actually didn't think it will make it, uh, but did all the treatment, required treatment. And then the best part we can do for the snake is to leave it alone. Because any wild animal is very, very stressed out when it's in close company with humans. Next slide. So what I did is I left him in a bathtub like this and underwater and just let him free, you know, like no one was around to disturb him. And within three hours, the snake kind of picked up its uh, wits, its energy and slowly slithered out into the forest. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a common langur and was rescued from Hoskote on the outskirts of Bangalore. We don't find this particular species in Karnataka, especially near the Bangalore forest of Banargata. This is mainly found in the interiors like Bandipur, Nagarhole. Next slide, ma'am. Uh, so we found this chain which was around the neck. We cut off the chain. There were wounds. The wounds healed. And I was telling you, pet animals kind of have a mentality of love towards people. You know, they assume humans are not dangerous. But this particular female was very wary of people. I think she was mistreated. She was beaten and abused. So she had no love for people, thankfully. Mm -hmm. And uh, next slide. In a very short time, we could release her back into the forest. So we went back to forest where we found her. And with due protocol and help from the forest department, she was released with her own kind. And because she's a uh, previous slide. Now. Yeah. So uh, this was a beautiful uh, jungle cat, you know. So people assume that this is a domestic cat. But actually, she is slightly bigger in size, weighing around 5 kilos. And uh, was brought from Whitefield, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Whitefield in Bangalore. Uh, he, she was in the garden of a beautiful, nice farmhouse and doing her own thing. I think looking for birds and bird, a bird's nest, you know, to find the eggs and all. 
the gardener found her and he was so afraid he thought he is uh, she looked bigger than the domestic cat so his instincts so something kicked in he had a metal rod with him he beat her on her head you know next slide so that uh, straight away caused uh, intense bleeding you know i think the tongue which was immediately cut you can see here caused so much bleeding that i actually assumed that there is a severe head injury also you know uh but uh, with treatment and um, uh, i couldn't do a ct scan which i would have liked to but i didn't have the facility uh, so did the regular treatment and uh, sedated her did the treatment next slide she recovered beautifully so this is the enclosure in which she is kept quiet you can see it's all covered and the platforms were made no one was allowed to disturb her and she healed beautifully within a month then we took her into the western ghats you know uh, into thick forest protected forest where there are no gardens and people and uh, next slide ma'am and uh, released her you know she she's this is just before release she she knows something is up and you know she's going to be free and uh, she was released she ran out of the uh, enclosure you know the cage <laughs> next slide uh this if you can uh, i don't know the image might be a little confusing this is a cobra actually and at construction sites we see a lot of uh, you know earth movers jcb machines which are digging and uh, they don't mean to but the snake which is underground gets uh, the you know goes through it and you can see there's some internal organs that are protruding out so and it was all muddy you can see the organ is you know um, attached with mud and dirt but uh, if the animal is brought to us in a golden period you know within the few hours uh, we can um, you know do emergency surgery and they heal beautifully so next slide uh, she healed very well and was released in uh, you know inside the banargata forest obviously didn't take her back to where she came from because that's a construction site and you know again things will go south for her if if she is released there uh, next slide uh this is an indian rat snake now this is a non venomous snake you know and they are also doing very well uh, in our suet system underground they move around so this was a drain pipe that she got stuck in and cover and so next slide just cut off the cover there is some wound there where it was stuck and that wound healed uh, within a very short period of time and next slide we released her in a, a you know banargata forest itself next slide Uh, so we are also coming across uh, these are turtles and terrapins in the image you see now when people go fishing they are going to catch fish but that fish bait is not only caught by fishes even terrapins and turtles catch it and the hook of the fish fishing hook gets entangled and stuck in their throat next slide so one such case came and we took an x ray we we got uh, you know found out where exactly the hook is surgery was done uh next slide and uh, you know i'm putting fluids here after surgery and uh, healed beautifully and she was released back into a safe protected forest water body where no fishing is uh, taking place so she will not get caught all over again next slide ma'am so coming to the next category is poisoning and pollution with increased uh, urbanization our water bodies are getting polluted and uh, so the the casualty of it is not only people but you can see water birds like grey heron this fellow consumed a, you know beautiful grey heron came with a, you know complete digestive disturbance and uh, we suspect it was from a lake in the bang uh, i'm sure you've heard of you know some lakes in bangalore that are frothing so it was from one of these lakes and you know full of polluted water effluents the fish is contaminated these water birds are forced to eat this contaminated fish and they succumb you know so uh, this poor bird didn't make it because it was just too much uh, for it to handle the chemicals you know the heavy metals toxicity next slide this is a purple heron again signs of severe digestive disturbances and the water body it was brought from was belandur lake which is like highly polluted in bangalore it's still frothing and flaming and the casualty is our water birds you know next slide so we get a lot of orphaned young birds you know where where uh, there is no human involvement the nest falls off or uh, you know because uh, the parent abandons it or the parent has uh, passed away we get a lot of orphaned young birds which we hand rear so in this case these are the baby miners which are you know hand fed uh, uh, insects and fruits 
and uh, once they start feeding on their own we will stop feeding them next slide so once they start becoming little big we leave them in a bigger enclosure so that they now start uh, you know flying on their own and once the flight improves they are released into the wild next slide uh, this was a very uh, uh, lovely surprise for me. I didn't know Banargata, Bangalore had fo foxes in its forest, but this common fox was rescued from, you know, very close to my Banargata center in Arnekal. And it was very aggressive, shy. So I know that his mother maybe have got killed or, you know, something would have happened to her. She didn't return. And the forest department picked up the animal and they actually thought it is a wild dog or something and they were like you know what is this kind of thing uh, so then i was pleasantly surprised to identify it as a common fox so we didn't have to handle him too much just gave him some space time and feed and uh, next slide ma'am um, became quite wild uh, and uh, in 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 almost just six seven months we could uh, release this fellow and what we do is we do a soft release in case of babies and uh, orphan, which we hand rare, is we release them in our center so that if they don't find food around, they can come back to us and we will continue to support them with little food every other day. So next slide. This beautiful fox would come every day and every other day to the center. And, uh, and after a couple of weeks, completely became independent and stopped coming, you know. So this was a beautiful surprise that I, I found that we have foxes in Bangalore. Next slide. So the final category is natural injuries. So all the trauma which I mentioned, humans are related directly or indirectly. But there are also some injuries which happen because of their living in cities with us. So this beautiful uh, crested serpent eagle, which again I was surprised we have in Bangalore. Uh, came with bleeding in its oral cavity. So suspect maybe it's dashed into some glass or window pane or some, some other, um, uh, you know, uh, barrier. And uh, it got disoriented. So it was brought to us, treated him, and uh, he healed beautifully, you know. Um, next slide. So the crested serpent eagle is basically having a crest when it's alarmed. You know, the crest will come up. And it will appear bigger and scarier and, you know, more uh, threatening. Whereas, uh, next slide, ma'am. In the next slide, you can see when it's calm and composed, the crest is down and it is appearing smaller and calmer, you know. So, uh, all, all variety of wild animals are uh, uh, brought. And uh, natural injuries are also part of the, uh, you know, the life cycle. Uh, so, next slide, ma'am. So I've, I've, I've uh, just want to share that I've written about tripod, my slender Loris friend, and a couple of other stories which uh, which were, you know, very close to me. And uh, uh, I hope uh, you can you can uh, you know uh, pick it up for your children. It's it's for children basically, but I think I found many adults who enjoyed it too. So I thought I'll just put this up. Uh, next slide. So finally. Um, we at WRRC are trying to do a little bit for uh, urban wildlife and uh, uh, I'm so glad to get an opportunity to spread the word of the work we do, the amazing work we do. Thank you so much. <laughs>